Okay, we're going to get to a basic message today. I got to thinking how long it had been since I had used this particular message, and it's been a while. We're going to be talking about the new birth. And literally, I mentioned it. We'll read John chapter 3, the first 10 verses. Y'all all familiar with these scriptures, but let's read them again here. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, or even the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? And know it not these things. All right. These words were spoken to our Lord from a religious leader. He was a ruler of the Jews. He wasn't a cutthroat. But he was, in man's eyes, an upright person, an upright man. By the way, the word Nicodemus means superior to all the people. But it says, note that he came to Jesus by night. We don't know why that he came by night. Maybe he didn't want somebody to see him. <laughs> I don't know. The Lord didn't tell us, so our speculation would be that simply speculation. We, we won't just speculate why he came by night. May have been when he got under conviction, and he thought he might go check Jesus out. But this is a universal need. He said, ye must be born again, or ye cannot see the kingdom of God. It's necessary, is it not? The Lord said, you must or you cannot. Either way. It's a truth so important that we can't afford to pass it. The only condition that was given. Uh, the Jews said, unless you're circumcised, you can't be saved. The Church of Christ says, unless you're baptized, you can't be saved. But if you will, look down to the scriptures next down, Acts 15, verse 1 and 11. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. 
Folks, that's the only way. It's through Him, isn't it? Through His grace. Everyone that hopes to be in heaven, to enter heaven, must be born again. Now we asked a question here, and Nicodemus did. Uh, <laughs> what does it mean to be born again? In verse 3, he said, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except to me born, man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now notice it says he cannot see. Somebody says something, he finally seeks in, they say, oh, I see. Y'all ever do that? Oh, I see. A man cannot understand the Bible until he has been saved. Shall I say that again? A man cannot understand the Bible or God's Word until he has be born, been born again. Amen. Because he has not the Spirit until that time. But there's a lot of misunderstanding on this. But I can tell you this much, by our first birth, we're sinners, born below. But here, being born again means to be born from above, or of the Spirit. But Nicodemus said, now, he asked, a, we'd say, a rational question. Uh, how can a man be born when he's old? Well, it's impossible, isn't it? Um, but so corrupt is the old man that God gives up trying to patch him up. Now, man doesn't give it up. Man still tries to patch himself up in order to be saved, but that's not the way it's done. But the Scripture says, A natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. And that's why Paul said, In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Uh, you talk to someone today about their soul. No, I'm not too bad. I, I'm not too bad. Now what the Lord said, In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. If you will, look down to your next article. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. So we're born of incorruptible seed when we're born of the Spirit, are we not? Now, I don't know if y'all, when you came to the age that you began to ask questions about life and where you, from whence you came and so forth, you had absolutely no say about your birth when you were born the first time. Is that right? None of us can be unborn. Y'all keep that thought in mind because I'm going to come back to it in a moment. But so corrupt is the old man that God gave up trying to fix him up. There's two distinct births listed. And of course that's a birth after the flesh. And then the birth by the spirit. Man may dress up the old man. But it's like putting a rattlesnake on a piece of carpet. You're not going to change that nature, are you? Man may dress it up. Make it look better. Uh, if you will, look at your next article on your paper there. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, and he's talking about Saul. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth.
For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Isn't that great? The Lord looks at our heart. A man thinks evil because he is after the flesh. If you will, look down at your next scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Among whom also we all, now notice he didn't say part of us, we all, Paul writing the church at Ephesus, had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Now, I don't know how you can get there that I'm not too bad, I'm, I'm a, a pretty good person. That's not what it says, is it? We all walked after the flesh, he says. Now, the question I ask, if Nicodemus needed a new birth, then don't we? So we ask the question then, why must a person be born again? But again, let me be repetitious. We were all born wrong the first time. To sinful Adam, We're all kin, whether you like it or not. Wasn't one man, one woman in the beginning. We've all come from that. That makes us flesh, and flesh will never be anything but flesh. Like begets like. And I pointed that out when I put Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, and let's read that. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. The earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Turkeys are not born from duck eggs. It don't happen. Dogs never have kittens. Lizard does not become a monkey. And flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Not allowed. <laughs> it's corrupt. And that's why a person must be born of the Spirit. But then the question I'm asked always, and, and I want you all to get the thrust of this message right now. How can I know that I've been born again? I'm glad you asked. Look at the next verse down. 1 John 5, verse 1. What does it say? Whosoever believeth, it didn't say whosoever baptized, did it? <coughs> whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Then, uh, if you will, flip your paper right quick. We're going to look at 1 John 3, verse 14. We know. We don't guess. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. I was watching yesterday over two hours I watched a, a video on the fellow up in Ohio that kidnapped those three women or three kids basically one was 14, one was 16 and one was 20 
He kidnapped them and kept them as sex slaves for 10 years. When they, they finally got loose, the lady broke loose and she cried out for help and called the laws and the laws arrested this man who happened to be with his two brothers when they found him. They interviewed his two brothers. And they asked him what they thought about his brother, their, their brother. And one of them said, I hope he rots in hell. I don't know about that one, do you? I wouldn't wish that on an enemy, much less my brother. You'd hate to sin, aren't you? You hate that what the man did, and it was ungodly what the man did. He kept those girls, one of them 11 years and the other two for 10 years. One of them had gotten pregnant and had a six-year-old uh, little girl when they found him. And he put them through all kinds of torture. But I thought myself about the scripture, and I'd already prepared my message when I watched uh, when I was watching the program. Here were some guys that literally hate their brother. Not a good sign, is it? All right, right quickly. What is re the result of being born again? The good news is we become children of God, don't we? Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. When we become sons of God, that makes us brothers, does it not? He is our brother, our Savior. And the essence of life. Folk, without him there'd be no life. We become sons of God. The scripture says it doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but one thing we know, when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're forgiven of all the sins in our life. Past, present, and future. We're given eternal life. Because of his nature, because of our now nature. But the flesh man is still there. The old person is still there. Thus the conflict begins. And folks, I said last Sunday and I'll say it again. The greatest battle you'll have on this earth, even as a saved person, will be your own self. When you wrestle the flesh. Because the spirit wants to do that which is right. And the old flesh man wants to do that which he had been used to doing. And that battle will continue until you give up the flesh completely. You had no say about your first birth, did you? You do the second. You do have a say about your second. Simply put, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a child of God. You become born again. One man thought he could be an exception. He thought he could get into heaven without that. If you will, look down at Matthew 22, verse 11. When the king came in to see the guest, 
he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless, no excuse. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folk, you can't be an exception when it comes to being born again. You have to trust Christ to be born again. And if you would, let's read the last verse on your page, on our page. And this is what the Lord tells us in the judgment day that's going to come. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast, have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Lord, we did all this. Have we done that, Lord? And the Lord didn't deny that they had done those works, did he? But he said, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. They had never put their faith in our Savior and our Lord. Well, the question really arises, and let me, let me say this. Some people that teach that you can lose your salvation, literally they're teaching that you can be unborn of the Spirit. You can't be unborn, folk. You can't be unborn of the flesh, can you not? Think you see see where I'm getting at? You can't be unborn of the spirit because you've been born of an eternal spirit, the spirit of God. You may not act like it always because of that flesh person, but that don't change facts. The devil, the world, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Impossible. Our name's written in the book, the book of life, once we trust Christ forever. No eraser can erase that. 